What's up my comic comrades? The Boys is back on Amazon Prime with season four and one of the best characters in the comic and series continues to be Homelander. I see you got the extra whipped cream in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yummers. He's the character we love to hate because he is so good at being evil. Dude has had some crazy evil moments throughout the comic series, but more specifically over the first three seasons of the live action series for The Boys. And we have no doubt that we are going to get a ton more with season four. Yes, the first four episodes of the new season are out, but we're not going to spoil any of those today. We're only going to break down his most evil moments from the first three seasons. And let me tell you, he's well on his way to rivaling the Joker in a lot of ways. With that in mind, this episode is not for the little ones, so that is your parental advisory warning. Yeah, this is going to be that kind of episode. All right, we're gonna jump right into the fire with Homelander falling in love with and dating a Nazi. You heard that right. Homelander started dating Stormfront in season two and initially he didn't know she was a Nazi. That is, until news broke exposing that Stormfront was secretly a hundred-year-old Nazi who was originally married to Richard Vought, the founder of Vought International. He actually gave her the first successful Compound V injection. Well, Richard Vought was a Nazi, so naturally so is Stormfront. But even after Homelander finds out about all of this, he still continues to date her in secret. He full-on knew at this point Stormfront was a Nazi who told him to his face there is a war for the culture and that the other races are grinding them down. And taking what's rightfully theirs, but they can fight back with an army of supermen, a million strong. And right after she tells him all this, he makes out with her, but not because he's a Nazi or agrees with what she's saying, but because of his constant desire to be needed and feel like he's in power. So that's what unfortunately turns him on. Even if it's a Nazi saying, you will be our leader. I need you, we need you. Guess this means we're breaking up. Nazi. Even after she was badly injured by Homelander's son Ryan, who rages out on her because she goes to kill his mom in front of him in the season two finale, causing her to lose an arm and having half her face becoming completely disfigured. Homelander is still about it. He even visits her in the hospital so she could stroke his ego if you catch my drift. Yeah, it's very disturbing, but this directly leads to another evil moment. You see, once she's injured and bedridden, she can't really control or try to manipulate Homelander anymore. And when she realizes he's not interested in her white supremacist ways, she kills herself. Homelander finds out she killed herself while trying to talk a girl out of killing herself by jumping off a roof. And while this is happening, there's a massive screen on a nearby building that breaks the news of her killing herself. This angers and saddens Homelander to the point where he goes on a rant about how people destroy their gods, referring to Stormfront. Asking the suicidal girl he's there to save, how is it fair that you get saved, but a beautiful perfect god gets killed? He then tells the girl, you know what? I think you should jump. Taken back by this, she looks off the building and nervously says, I don't think I want to. He then tells her to jump. She says, please, I don't want to, with Homelander replying, I'm not suggesting anymore. Jump. As he goes full evil, lighting up his eyes with laser vision, forcing her to jump off. It's an insane, intense moment that gives us one of the many glimpses of how psycho Homelander can be. Something similar that's worth a mention and extremely messed up is when he's trying to teach his son to fly, standing on top of the roof of a house, but his son Ryan is begging him, saying, I don't know how to fly. I don't have powers like you. Homelander insists, saying that he does, but Ryan says, Dad, please don't make me jump. Homelander is all like, Oh, buddy, you called me dad, while putting his hand on Ryan's back and pushing him off the roof. But Ryan just falls to the ground like a rock, which knocks him unconscious. This is nuts on many levels, like the fact that he's a young kid, but what pushes it over the edge for myself, and I'm sure most, is the fact that it's his own son he just pushed off a roof when his son was previously begging him not to make him do it. Homelander certainly isn't winning any Father of the Year awards. Moving along, we have one of the douchiest things Homelander has ever done, and that's outing Queen Maeve's sexuality on live TV, which he did out of spite to hurt her and let her know he knows about her and Elena's relationship. It all goes down during a live interview with Maria Menounos on TV. She asks, why are 92% of heroes Caucasian? Why doesn't Vought want diversity? Homelander clearly is annoyed at the question, saying, well, Maria Menounos, you're asking the hard balls, but check your facts. Take the Seven, for example, we have A-Train, he's a black man. We have Black Noir, who doesn't identify with any race. So they're covered. And we have a gay hero. Manunos asks, really, who in the Seven is gay? He tells her, Queen Maeve. Scoop for you, Maria. Maeve here is a strong, proud lesbian with a beautiful girlfriend, a Hispanic girlfriend, as we see Maeve is clearly extremely upset. Needless to say, this was a douche move solely because she was keeping a secret from him. It just demonstrates that Homelander is evil on so many levels, not just violently or disturbingly so. He's also a 
emotionally evil, always looking for a way to personally tear someone's life apart by divulging secrets or manipulating situations that have terrible outcomes emotionally, mentally, personally, and of course, even physically. Something that goes right in line with this is in the season three finale when Homelander reveals he killed Black Noir to A-Train, The Deep, and Ashley. Homelander is extremely pissed at this point, saying he was so excited when he was going to get a team because it would be the family he never had. And then he got all of them who are constantly letting him down. So in a rage state, as he normally is, he looks up at Ashley and says, take off your wig. She responds, what wig? And he just gives her the death stare, at which point she takes off her wig, revealing that she's missing most of her hair due to an anxiety compulsion we've seen throughout the series of her constantly pulling out her hair. So this is yet another example of Homelander emotionally manipulating someone just to humiliate them. I suppose you could make the argument that Homelander's emotional and mental attacks are worse than his physical, as most of the time his physical end with the other person's death. But with his emotionally damaging ones, his victims have to live with dealing with the trauma he's caused, oftentimes leaving their life in ruins. And the way he absolutely mortified and humiliated Ashley in front of members of the Seven for no reason was wild. Along those lines, we have the time Ashley told Homelander good news. She said, I found a hero to replace Translucent. She shows him Blindspot, a blind superhero who is essentially a daredevil ripoff using his hearing or echolocation to see and be a great hero. Homelander is nice at first, but then asks the question, what happens if I do this? As he smacks Blindspot's ears incredibly hard. Blindspot screams in pain and we could hear the ringing in his ears as he falls to the ground. Now we don't know what happens to Blindspot after this, but one could assume he either died or so horrifically injured that he was forced to retire due to his ears no longer working because of Homelander. This was just a senseless, mean act. There was really no rhyme or reason besides Homelander just being an evil jerk. Next, we have a very disturbing moment, and that's Homelander spying on Stillwell, aka the vice president of Vought. You see, Homelander has a thing for her, specifically her breast milk. He has a weird mother fetish thing for her. In any case, he uses his x-ray vision to stare and look through a picture of himself on the wall at Stillwell's breast pumping. And the longing, creepy, perverted face he has is all kinds of gross and a massive invasion of someone's privacy. Dude doesn't know what boundaries are because he's a complete and utter creep. I mean, after Stillwell's death, we see him drinking her breast milk out of a bottle. It goes without saying that Homelander has some serious issues, but speaking of death, she was killed by Homelander. You see, Butcher ends up putting a bomb on Stillwell in her house, but when Homelander arrives, instead of saving Stillwell, he tells her he's pissed at her because she lied to him and because she loves her baby more than him. She tries to say, no, I don't, I love you. And he says, tell me the truth. To which she says, I'm scared of you. He then uses his laser vision to pretty much melt her head in. It's extremely gory and disturbing. Dude straight up killed the woman he had a creepy obsession with while her baby was in the next room. We also have the hijacked airplane scene. In the show, this is easily one of the most horrific evil Homelander moments. How it all goes down is Homelander and Maeve show up to stop terrorists who hijacked an airplane. They both make quick work of the terrorists. After everyone on the plane thanks Homelander and Maeve, they go to check on the pilot. However, unknown to them, there was one more hijacker in the cockpit, but before Homelander could take him out, he shoots the last living pilot in the head. Homelander then uses his laser vision to take the terrorist's head off, but in doing so, blasts all the plane's controls with it now not being able to be flown or landed by anyone. At this point, Maeve asks Homelander what they're going to do, and he basically says nothing. She suggests several things like flying all the passengers to the ground one by one or trying to lift the plane himself, but he's like, yeah, that's not going to work. The passengers then begin to beg him to save them, but he throws threatens them to stay back with his laser vision. In the end, she is forced to go with Homelander as they leave the passengers to die. So in layman's terms, Homelander messed up by accidentally lasering the controls to pilot the plane, at which point, instead of figuring out a way to save all the people on said plane, he thought it would be easier for him to just let them die and blame the plane crash on something else so his reputation wouldn't be tarnished. That is so insanely jacked up, it's not even funny. Like, think about that. He'd rather let a bunch of people on the plane die some of which were little children, just so he's not blamed for anything, and his reputation stays intact. Now, it is no secret that Homelander doesn't like the Deep, and for this next moment, he really made that point crystal clear. As a character, the Deep basically gets the same jokes Aquaman does. You know, a sea-based hero who talks to and has questionable relationships with fish. And let's just say the Deep takes that to a whole new level. Anyway, Homelander is aware that the Deep is friends with fish, and in one scene decides to bring him a special treat for lunch. The problem is, it's his 
octopus friend Timothy, who is still alive on the plate, mind you. The Deep tells Homelander, I can't eat him. That's my friend Timothy. He's begging for his life. He has kids. But Homelander says more sternly, eat Timothy. The Deep has no choice or it's probably going to be his life. So he slowly and begrudgingly starts eating his friend, who he says is praying, before he bites down on him, killing him and swallowing him. This is one of the most messed up and weird moments of the entire series, which is quite a statement. Somehow they made a man eating an octopus incredibly heartbreaking, emotional and twisted while simultaneously showing how ruthless and evil Homelander is yet again. The amount of pleasure Homelander gets through the physical and mental torture of the people around him is extremely sadistic. I mean, imagine being forced to eat your dog on top of the fact that you can communicate with your dog like a human. That is just jacked up. All right, we can certainly keep going with disturbing and evil Homelander moments, but we're gonna put the bow on it, so to speak, with Homelander's birthday speech. You see, while him and Starlight are giving a speech, someone in the crowd yells, your Nazi died, Homelander, referring to Stormfront, which clearly sets him off a little bit, but he was holding it in. As Starlight tries to smooth it over, saying, he's human just like the rest of us. We all make mistakes and deserve a second chance. Starlight continues to say, in that spirit, Homelander has agreed to donate 10 million to the Starlight House, but Homelander has finally boiled over, saying, nope, she just lied to you. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I am better. I'm not some weak crybaby that goes around apologizing all the time. And why would you want me to be? All my life, people have tried to control me. Rich people, powerful people tried to muzzle me, cancel me, keep me impotent and obedient like a puppet. And you know what? It worked because I allowed it to work. Guess what? If they can control me, you can bet your ass they can control you. They already do, you just don't realize it. I'm done. I am done apologizing. I am done being persecuted for my strength. You people should be thanking Christ that I am who and what I am because you need me, you need me to save you. I am the only one who possibly can. You're not the real heroes, I'm the real hero. Simply put, everything he said is exactly what a true dictator would say. This cemented Homelander as the malicious tyrant that he is. He's full on saying he doesn't need the people, they need him. You can't save yourselves, only he can. But that horrific moment wraps up our breakdown of Homelander's evilest moments through the first three seasons of The Boys, at least in our opinion. Let us know which moments you think are his worst down in the comment section. Other than that, we will see you next time when we talk about all things comics.